Well hello Internet and welcome to my tutorial on how I make YouTube videos or how I would like to call this how a regular guy definitely not an expert makes YouTube videos and the only reason why I'm making this tutorial is because earlier today one of you guys and actually this has been going on for a while asked me how I make YouTube videos and I said if five more people ask me I will make this tutorial immediately and about 16 of you asked for it so here it is when I very first started off making YouTube videos, this is the computer I used, a Mac Mini that cost me less than $150. The whole idea behind it was this was just a fun hobby. My whole entire goal was to make videos to help people. And just like everybody else that makes tutorial videos, we don't do this stuff to make money. Because as you're going to see here in a minute, it takes literally years to get enough subscribers where you actually make anything. So it all began with a Mac Mini, and the only reason why I decided to get that was because the software, if I wanted to do this on my PC, was extremely expensive. The microphone I have is just a cheapo, regular old Mac iPod microphone. And by the way, they don't make these anymore. And on top of that, the new ones aren't particularly good. But there are plenty of other good, inexpensive, microphoned headphones that you can get. So many that I won't even bother to really point one out. Just check the reviews and I'm sure you'll get something good. And this right here is the video camera that I normally use, and I have no idea who those girls are, whenever I am recording. And this is the Kodak ZI8, and no, you can't buy this anymore. But you guys want to know exactly what I use, this is what I use. And this is kind of also showing you that you can do this stuff for pretty much nothing, because I'm sure this guy cost me well less than $100. As per the software I use, I use Camtasia Studio. Actually, I use a very old version of Camtasia. And if you're on a Windows computer, you can definitely get this. And I use this only for screen recording and occasionally a couple other little silly things, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And of course, it also is available for Macintosh. And I consider it, after I tested a whole bunch of these different guys, to be the best recording software that was available. Previous to this, I used QuickTime X or QuickTime Player to do screen recordings, but I ceased to use it because I could no longer do this. A new version of OS X came out and they got rid of the Zoom. So that's the reason why I switched. Originally, for at least three years, I used the QuickTime Player. So if you don't need to Zoom, you can have QuickTime Player for free if you're on a Macintosh computer. I do all of my editing, which you're going to see an example of here pretty soon, on iMovie. Why? Because it's extremely simple. Remember, I'm not an expert. I'm kind of an idiot, really, for producing videos. I'm not really, I don't consider myself to be anything near an expert. And as you're going to see, iMovie makes it extremely easy. So sorry, PC guys, but like I said before, I chose to use a Macintosh, a cheapo Macintosh. Macintosh so that I wouldn't have to spend a ton of money on software. So that's just my choice. I'm not saying go do it, but you guys ask me what I do, and this is what I do. Brings me into Camtasia Studio. Actually, I use Camtasia too, but it's still pretty much exactly the same. And I'm actually using the QuickTime Recorder up here because I can't record with Camtasia and also have it open at the same time. So that's what I'm using up there. But remember, the only reason why I'm not still using QuickTime is because you can't zoom with QuickTime. It stinks. So I'm going to make that go away. And basically, I'm going to try to explain exactly what I do with Camtasia. I do very little with it. I'll just put it that way. I use it only for screen recordings. And this is 1080p, so you will be able to see the video full screen. And you're going to have to to look down here. Now basically what I use Camtasia for is I drag this little thing down here around. And then I split the video by hitting Command-T like that. And then if I want to track showing a cursor, a little yellow dot, I can just drag that down here and drop it on there. And now whenever I play, wherever my cursor is, it is going to follow my mouse around. And that is the extent of what I do with Camtasia. Now, the only other thing that's great about it is you can record in 1080p. You have to go up into share, however, and do something a little bit weird. Sorry, I can't zoom, remember? And then you go to advanced export, and then this guy's going to pop onto the screen. Then you hit options, and then after that, you're going to see 1920 by 1080p. 
you're not full screen, just trust me on that. That's what it says. And if it doesn't say that, you have to go into size and then change it to 1920 by 1080p if you want to record in 1080p. And just so you know, whether it's my computer being extremely slow or not, this guy takes about three hours to render after it's done. So that's kind of a nightmare. But there it is. That's Camtasia Studio, and that's what I do with it. So next, I'm going to export this, render it, whatever, and then jump over into iMovie and show you exactly how I edit. Now, a bunch of you guys have asked exactly what is sitting in front of me whenever I am writing these programs. And you can see it right here. It is a sequence diagram. That is what I use. I don't almost ever actually model it out in Umlet, which is an application for creating sequence diagrams. But I normally draw everything out just using a regular old pencil, and then I write little notes just like you can see right here, you know, so that I know exactly what is going on. So I try to never actually work from code. I really don't like that. It kind of makes the videos boring for me to make. However, you can see right here I have all the different classes, and here's some more classes right here. And then in between them I go and define all of the methods that I need and all the attributes and how they interact. And I actually made a tutorial, I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner, in which I show exactly how I go from ideas the whole way to finished code using sequence diagrams if you have any interest in that at all. So that is basically what's sitting in front of me whenever I'm making these videos. And that brings us to iMovie. This is where I edit everything. This is all the cool, awesome stuff, and this is the only reason why I ever bought a Mac. Basically, to import a project, you just go into File, New, it's just so simple. And you get all of these different sorts of themes. I use the bulletin board all of the time, mainly for consistency reasons. When I first started using iMovie, all this stuff down here didn't even exist. So I've just never used it. So bulletin board's what I use, and then I just give it a project name, and all these are my settings that I use, and then I hit Create. But I've already created that. Then I go into File again, and go new event and that will create a new event down below in this area and I'm actually editing the video that I'm making right now sort of like we're stuck in a time warp then after we create the event just right click on it and import movies and you pick up all of your different movies you want to use then to get them you just select them with your mouse and you get all of them and then wherever you want to put them you just drag them up here and drop them in that's it that's so easy I like to work with the waveforms right here that's what these are you can hear me in the background making noise and to do that you just click on this button you can see there they went away and there they came back I find it's very easy to edit that way the only other thing that I really use up here except for editing like what I do is I come in and I find an area in which I want to edit out sound, I just highlight it right like that, and then I hit delete, and it goes away. And that is all I do. And I do that a couple hundred times in each video, that's why it takes forever to edit these videos. It actually takes me very little time to make the videos. Editing and rendering is like all of my time. About the only other thing that I ever use, which I don't really even use, is record a voiceover. And this is kind of cool. What you do is you just click on this and you can just you can see my voice talking down here then what you do is if you actually want to do a voiceover anywhere you just click with your mouse and then you start talking and it automatically throws in a voiceover as you can see right there and it will play out for you right along with your other video clip if you want to use that and that's about the only thing I ever do with iMovie in regards to this guy up here now when it comes to actual editing things I use this stuff all the time you can see a lot of this stuff automatically goes in here and what this is is you look on the right side of the screen that right there is a transition and you can come in and move the transitions around and then if you want to throw in say some text well this is music over here what I got right now in my opinion you should never use any of this music over here even though legally you have the right to do it because you bought iMovie I have had an insane number of copyright claims against me illegal copyright claims that I fought and got rid of but I've had tons of videos taken down that I had to fight to bring back so I never use this music and music in general kind of stinks in regards to making tutorials so what's the point then I can open up my picture library just like that then there's all sorts of text that you can use and so if I want to throw in my website here just drag it over and drop it in and that's it and then you can type in whatever newthinktank.com and hit done 
and there it is. And I mean, this is why everybody gets iMovie. It's just so easy. And then you can just stretch it and you can see there it is. And then it shows up and it goes away. And there's a whole bunch of these different types of little text elements that you can use. But for the most part, I stick with these two here and sometimes this stuff up here. And the other thing I use that you guys think is really cool is these transitions right here. And basically they work just like the text areas do. But if I want to throw a transition in, you can see there's a transition. There's a whole bunch of transitions. Now these transitions right here across the top, they're kind of slower transitions. And when I want to do a really fast transition, I use these guys down here. And it's all up to personal taste which ones you like. But if I come in here and I decide that I want to throw a transition in, so right there sounds like a great place to put a transition in. All I would do is grab my transition, drag it over, and drop it in. And it automatically and there is the transition. So iMovie is just absolutely awesome. I, I, I love it. It, is, it makes video editing a breeze and it has all these cool effects. And in my opinion, it, it's well worth buying a Macintosh just to get iMovie. Of course, like I said, I started off with a cheapo cheapo iMac mini. And I think that that really was enough for video editing. It was kind of slow, but really transitioning up to my bigger Mac I mean, size-wise or speed-wise, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference, which is absolutely amazing. Now, once again, I know I am no big guy. Actually, almost nobody even knows I exist except for you absolutely awesome, great guys. And I don't think I ever take enough time to tell you how absolutely amazingly grateful I am that you guys watch my videos and you enjoy them and you learn things and you talk to me. Always feel free to leave questions because I just really love to talk to you guys. It's it's unbelievably cool. If you think it's cool for you to watch my videos, it is so much cooler for me actually to get in contact with you guys and actually help you and know that you enjoy my videos. But I just wanted to get to the point of exactly how long it takes to actually get a substantial number of views. And I think you're going to see here exactly why everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody who does tutorials and even almost everybody that does videos on YouTube, we don't do it for the money. We do it because we enjoy it, especially the people that make 500, 600, 1,000 videos. And the reason why is when I first started off, after doing this for four months, I averaged 100 views a day. That's it. And I made a lot of videos and they were horrible. I know. I mean, I, I'm amazed anybody watched them because they were really, really bad. But I just really wanted to be able to do what I'm doing today, which is, you know, talking to a lot of you guys. So I just kept doing it. And then after nine months, I was getting about 500 views a day. And then after 11 months, I was getting about 1,000 views per day. And right now, as I speak, I get about 14,000 views per day, which is absolutely amazing. So that's, it takes years to build up a subscriber base and find really cool people that stick with you. And I just wanted to show you exactly how long it takes. As per subscribers, previously I was talking about views, this is subscribers. And I never even bothered to track this stuff. I just think it's accurate. I got it off of uh, another website and it looks good. And I thought you guys might want to see how long it takes to get subscribers. Now I started making videos well before October 2011, but basically October 2011, I had 3,793. By January 2012, it went to 5509. And you can see all of the other numbers. And right here, I am at 54960 or maybe I broke 55,000. But like I said before, I just really don't pay a whole lot of attention to this. I've always said a million times, I would be so much happier to just have a hundred hardcore awesome fans that talk to me and I interacted with over having a million, you know, fans that just, you know, weren't fun to be around. So, you know, I really like you guys. And that's why I continue making videos. Why else do I do this? Just in case you guys really, really wanted to know the backstory. Basically, a couple years ago, before I started making YouTube videos, I was in a car accident. And I wasn't hurt, but it sort of like made me think about life and stuff and making an impact and doing really cool things and helping other people. And so that's why I started doing this. I thought... I could be good at teaching if I applied myself and kept trying to get better. 
And I was in a situation in which, because of the accident, I had to quit my job at the time and basically start over. And what I ended up doing was starting my own business. And I wanted to sort of like walk people through that process and show them what it's like to start from nothing and to build what ended up being a really extremely successful business. So along the way, I just, as I learned things, I just put it out there for anybody that was interested. And basically, why I do this, I mean, I saw the Khan Academy, that was one of the enlightening things, and it made me want to teach people for free. But basically, I saw a movie called Benjamin Button. And in Benjamin Button, this is what he said. For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early to be whoever you want to be. There is no time limit. Start whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. We can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you make the best of it. I hope you see things that will startle you. I hope you feel things you have never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope you have the strength to start all over again. And basically, I just wanted to let you guys know that that is pretty much it. And if I can in any way help you guys have the strength to start all over again like many of us have to in life, then that is the greatest thing that I could ever achieve. So, just wanted to let you into my world, answer a question I get all the time, and just tell you how cool you guys are. And I will end it with my obligatory ending. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.